Regular Outsiders viewers will remember that it was partly thanks to this show and to The Spectator Australia getting behind the work of Pauline Hanson, David Adler, the head of the Australian Jewish Association and others that the Australian government agreed back in 2018 to reduce by $10 million the amount of ta Australian taxpayers' money funding Palestinian terrorist organisations engaged in promoting the murder of Jews. Well, this week in The Spectator Australia, David Adler exposes another outrage occurring within Australia, and that is the activities of Hizbut Tahrir, who earlier this year held a rally in Sydney calling for the decapitation and the murder of Jews. Have a look. As long as Quran is our heart, Palestine is our heart, Al Aqsa is our heart. In an intriguing twist, David Adler wants to use the provisions of 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act to prosecute his but Tahrir. David Adler joins us now. David, how are you? Uh, uh, very well, uh, Rowan, and uh, looks like we're about to embark on another campaign, and I think this one also uh, has a good prospect of being successful. So first of all, David, tell us what was in that video, the references to Kabar, etc. What was happening in that rally and why are you so specifically outraged by it? Well, firstly, people need to understand that his book, Tahrir, are one of the most extreme Islamist political organisations. They have an objective of uh, re-establishing a worldwide caliphate under Sharia law. Um, They've been banned in many countries, uh, China, Russia, Indonesia, Turkey, and very significantly in the majority of Arab countries. But they've got a base in Australia. Uh, this rally has on only come to light because of the work of an organisation called the Middle East Media Research Institute, Memory, and they monitor radical Islamic uh, propaganda worldwide and translated into English. So here we have a group in Sydney on the streets in Lakemba who are calling for the necks of Jews. Now, I don't think they're doing that in order to tailor us some new shirts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Necks of Jews uh, in the context of radical Islam means separating their heads from their shoulders. Uh, to make their intent perfectly clear, they refer to Kaiba Kaiba Yahud, which is an ancient uh, massacre of Jews under the command of Muhammad himself, uh, and a number of other things, uh, you know, destroy the Jews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we think that they have breached uh, New South Wales incitement laws and federal incitement laws, and although we are fundamentally pro free speech and we have objected to certain provisions of 18C, particularly the lower two thresholds of uh, insult and offend. I think advocates of free speech who are reasonable do draw the line at incitement to violence. Absolutely. This is clearly incitement to violence. It's not like scribbling a cartoon. So we are throwing everything we can at them. Uh, we have laid formal legal complaints with the New South Wales Attorney General and with the Australian Human Rights Commission uh, invoking 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. Have you had any response? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, at New South Wales level, uh, it's been referred to a unit in the police for investigation called the Obsessed Persons Unit. And at federal level, the complaint has been accepted. Uh, we've provided uh, additional information that the Australian Human Rights Commission has requested. They've explained to us that there's quite a backlog, so it's a bit like booking a court date in advance. It will take 
some months for uh, our matter to be definitively heard, hopefully in the first half of next year, but uh, it is in the legal and bureaucratic pipeline. I think it's worth making the point, Ryan, that uh, these people are not just bigoted against Jews. They are vehemently against Australian values. On Anzac Day, they insult the Anzacs. Uh, they have been contrary to Australian democratic values on a variety of things. Uh, they refused to condemn ISIS uh, when interviewed on the ABC. And uh, spectacularly, they proposed a, an, a talk at the Sydney Opera House called Honour Killings Can Be Morally Justified. Oh, now, oh. Um, this was removed from the program. This goes beyond free speech. If you're going to argue that honour killings can be morally justified, you may well inspire um, young radicals to do exactly that. To kick so, kill their women or sisters, absolutely. Rita? Yeah, it's, it's dreadful. It is, because it's not some intellectual argument. Honour killings happen, and thousands of them happen. So to, to be rationalising or justifying it is absolutely abhorrent. But... Uh, we have a lot of uh, race-obsessed activist journalists in this country. How was all this... How did this escape their attention? It was <laughs> memory who ended up exposing this. Uh, how did our race-obsessed <laughs> journos miss these calls for violence against a ethnic minority? Uh, Rita, you hit on a very strong point. And it's actually the conclusion of my article. Can you imagine, I mean, this, this hasn't been aired at all on the ABC or SBS, for example, but if there was a group in Australia that instead of calling for the necks of Jews, called for, say, the necks of blacks, do you think the media reaction would be at all different? That's, Ab that's my conclusion. Absolutely. James. Uh, it would be outrage everywhere. Yeah. James. And I just want to ask, um, where have you gotten with the federal government in terms of the question of proscribing Hizbut Tahrir? Because I think they've said, well, they'll continue to look at it, but it is, as Rowan said at the start, it is an organization proscribed throughout the Middle East um, in a number of other countries. Again, free speech, you can be an absolutist about this and say that this crosses a lot of red lines. Um, have you had any response from the government on this? Well, uh, when Tony Abbott was prime minister uh, in 2015, uh, he gave a talk to the National, National Press Club where he called out his book Tahrir as uh, supporters and recruiters of terrorism and he tried to get them banned. Um, there were a couple of people in Parliament who argued against banning them, notably uh, Dr Anne Alley, uh, who holds herself as mm. a specialist in Islamic extremism. Uh, but importantly, the advice came back from ASIO that at the time, his book Taria did not meet the technical definition of a terrorist organisation. So the attempt by then Prime Minister Abbott to have them prescribed failed. Uh, interestingly, just uh, yesterday, I was approached by a retired judge who said that this may well, uh, the latest pronouncements may well have crossed the line because our definition is not just the doing of acts of terrorism, but fostering terrorism. So it would revolve around the interpretation of that principle of fostering terrorism and whether calling for the necks of Jews, uh, calling destroy Jews, does that foster terrorism? Around the world, the experience is yes. So whether that technically meets the definition in Australia is something we will pursue. David Adler, fantastic to chat to you as always. Keep up the great work, great writing in The Spectator Australia there and uh, uh, a great voice of reason in Australia. Great to, to have you on the show. We'll speak soon. Thanks so much. Rowan, thanks so much. And I just want to uh, close in saying that today, 31 October, is the anniversary of the Battle of Beersheba, the charge of the Light Horse Brigade, perhaps the greatest victory of the Anzacs. We honour the Anzacs, the exact opposite of what his book Taria does. Thank you. Great stuff. Thanks so much, David Adler, head of the Jewish Association in Australia.